What's up everyone? Hope everyone's having a lovely day. When I originally started this video archive of my garden, it was so I could have weekly increments. I can check the health of certain plants, whether I'm having fungal issues, whether it's disease, pests, etc., whatever. And having that archive has been really helpful. The last video was almost two weeks ago, so this is a little bit behind. This is not in the weekly increments that I like, but hey, you know what? All the feeding and um, all the feeding and treatment has been taking place on schedule. Just been works been a little hectic, and I haven't had a chance to do the video. So here it goes. Before we show the good, I'm gonna start with the bad. And I know I'm starting to get a couple views, but um, if anyone knows anything, feel free to let me know because I am not an expert. I am the world's worst farmer, and it would have been Garner, but someone already had that name. Anyways, let's get into this. The four bags of potatoes, or excuse me, red potatoes, right? Um, I was showing, and the disease that it had turned out it was blight. And everywhere I read said to go ahead and cut it down at the base, which was roughly 10 days ago. And they said give it two weeks and to allow the potatoes to, to scab over and then go ahead and harvest if you're able to save them. I'm just kind of curious to see if, oh look, got some small ones. I'm gonna pull them out in a couple days. Even, even if all I get is a couple, four bags of a bunch of smalls, I'm happy. You kidding, that makes great mashed potatoes. I mean, that's still a win. You know, that that blight, or the blight, what they have said was that if it covers over 25% of your plants, um, it could actually affect the, the tubers and it will run down the stems and it will affect the tubers and you'll lose everything. So the best thing you do is just do an early harvest, cut them down at the base, 10 days to two weeks, and um, then go ahead and harvest. So, uh, I'm stoked, Just I just barely dug into that and there was uh, two potatoes right there. I'm germinating some coconuts. I'm curious to see how these things come out. I think they'll be all right, but uh, yeah, just messing around with that. The green turmeric is coming up. Yeah, hyped on that. But we'll come back to this, but because back to the carnage. Okay, now this right here breaks my heart. This right here is an artichoke. I've been growing this. This is now the second year. And there's the other artichoke. That was the bigger one. That was the more healthier one. Been meaning to pull it out, but I didn't want to pull it out until I did this video because I want to be as transparent and open. I have no idea why this thing died. It just all of a sudden, like the like the foliage on it all of a sudden got like weird and it was like it wasn't pushing like new healthy growth and all of a sudden it just it turned into that and that's a when you were growing something for like for over a year you know almost two and then all of a sudden it dies it you know it's it's a little heartbreaking yeah but but uh, outside of that i mean the peppers are kicking. Um, got a bunch of bells here. I don't know if those are going to turn red or these are just green. But uh, the jalapenos. Jalapenos are on fire. I know that much. Got a bunch on this tiny plant. And they are, they are going. Everything's looking good. I think, I don't know if this is a sweet pepper. Got another jalapeno really small plant but a lot of fruit on it a lot of fruit excited to see all that fruit you know i don't know if this is a sweet i think that might be one of the sweets have been um I need to get them out of the pot I'm hoping that's another banana pepper because over here these bananas are starting to go I need to get look they're in these tiny little what was that like a half gallon one gallon pot and they are ready 
ready for something big. When I pull the potatoes, I think these will be going in with where the uh, where the red potatoes were because these are more hardier and they're more res resilient to blight. And this this tomato plant, this was a sucker off of the purple Cherokee tomato. And I just shoved it in there. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys something really interesting because it took, it rooted, and look, we got we got the flower started. So that is awesome. So when I go to replant this, I'll go ahead and make sure I separate them, and I'll get this in its own pot as well. Yeah, heck yeah, that's what it's all about, right? We got beans kicking. All kinds of beans all through here. That's looking good. That's looking good. Ooh, get that out of there. Got plenty of green beans. So, not for a couple of meals, but I mean, that's what it's about. Nice, nice, healthy beans. Let's shove these poles in. Got the cucumbers growing up them. That one's growing good. Hopefully we'll soon start seeing some fruit. I need to come out. And on the cucumbers, I've been taking the suckers, just, just like tomatoes, and I've been cutting off the suckers, and I've been taking them and sticking them in a glass of water, and they're actually rooting. So that's a really cool way. Like, see this one right here? You wanna see this sucker right here? Like, you cut it right there, and then stick that in water and I'm getting about maybe about a 50% um, root rate or germination rate or uh, it's not germination but just like we start putting out roots and I will show you that here very shortly more nice flowers coming on that cucumber I've been trying to keep them all real nice and trimmed up at the bottom with all the leaves so it's just one long stem coming up just to keep it away from any of the, from any of the fun fungal bacteria that could be you know, on top of the straw because we know how they love to get disease. Oh. Got this thing was looking good. Got some powdery mildew going on it right now, but got a nice little um, squash. That's probably ready to go. I don't think it's gonna get much bigger. Pull that off right now. Yep. But I want to show you something. So, this seed tray, I did the Everglades tomatoes, and they were on the countertops under the lights with everything else with the top. They never cracked. And now I look and I see the Everglades tomatoes coming up, and I am stoked. They're really hardy for this region. They can take the brutal sun, they can take the heat, they can take everything and they grow like a weed and apparently they put out a lot of fruit. So I'm excited to see what they do. The, oh God, I know I'll pronounce the name wrong. <laughs> but uh, here is Muscadine wine grapes. And I've been growing this for a year and I'm just now starting to get my first signs of grapes on here, and I am, yeah, that's what it's about, you know, nothing happens overnight, just keep trying, and good things come, so the Cherokee purple tomato, I pulled that sucker off, and I put it in with that pepper, and it rooted, but, uh, I'm hoping we get more fruit on it, we gotta kind of do a little dab to get the flowers to pollinate. Been feeding everything really good, and hopefully we get some more. Some uh, what is that? Rapids uh, lettuce, another squash. Kale's looking good. That was a garlic clove I put in there, and my cilantro has failed me. I don't know what the hell. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a whole pack of seeds, and it's just, oh, I don't know, it's just never done nothing. Even the parsley, the parsley's barely coming up. 
I mean, it's been months now. And I mean, it's just nothing's coming up. The mint's still going. Looks like it. I don't know. Everything's still kind of rocking, you know, in its own way. And over here, this this one cute um, this cucumber. I'm gonna have to put a put a pole up for it. But this one is just look at the leaves on this thing. It's massive. Look at the leaves on this thing. I mean, how that's almost ten foot tall. I might top it. I don't know. I don't know. Debating. These buck ch choice. Uh, that one's not looking as good, but that one's looking good. That'll definitely be making it to the saute pan at one point. More kale. You see the difference between that buck, buck choy and that? Just like the difference in the color. Oh, you know. One's got really white stalks and the other's got more of like a green. And the onions. These were all seeded. Those are just green onions. Best on the grill. And the squash has kind of ran over them, but you know, hey. You know. Tell you what, you put these in the bag with some butter and some garlic and some like uh Tony Tashiris. You let it marinate, that butter, oil, um, little garlic, coming to cherries, and then put it on the grill. That is when life is good. And these onions, so I topped them. Wow. Now they're all kind of like dying. Probably because they've grown for so long. Oh, look at all the snails in there. Okay. not bulbed up but just something's taking them and much other get yeah there ain't nothing there I don't know it's uh more disappointing than anything else I know that much Forage is blooming from last year, so that's always a nice sign. And the sweet potato pop, find out what happens. So the pruning, or I removed all the uh, peaches on this tree except for one. We got a chance to try it. The peaches were absolutely delicious. Um, I cut off, I cut the rest of the peaches off, so it would push new and healthy growth to try to really get more structure to the tree and I mean it's, it's it worked so hopefully next year we get more peaches and yeah living the journey so now on to the eggplants they are absolutely rocking got the bee, bee palm down there the lavender which are kind of getting Drug choked out from the ridiculous growth on these eggplants. I'm out here every day with a paintbrush. And I'll take like the well open flowers and I'll put it in there and just to try and pollinate them. And I don't know why I'm not getting any eggplants. Not one. I mean it's almost it's almost heartbreaking, but you know, whatever, I mean, it's, it's still a nice cover to look at, but it would be nice to get some eggplants out of it, you know. But uh, hopefully, um, hopefully the tide will turn here shortly. And we've got more peppers in here, and they are, they are start, they are all going. Everything's looking nice and lovely. Nice sized peppers, I mean, everything's been getting fed weekly, and everything is just doing their thing, you know. Pepper and 
So I finally got the trellising done that I've been wanting to do. It's just two, two pieces of rope. And they, and they go, go down. And they go up to eyes. I got the sweep tails on the other side. They come down, they grab each side of the basket. And those are the cantaloupe. You know, I'd love to see bigger leaves. Feeding them, doing everything. I just, um, you know, maybe they're just uh, going a little slower. It'll all work out at the end. At least I hope. This is nice to see. That's the green turmeric that I had in the cover. And here is the ginger. And the ginger is coming up. And as I get a couple more shoots, and as they start forming, I'm going to start putting more soil. I'm going to start backfilling this as it goes. I'm going to get the force uh, soil up to right about here but I'm gonna do it in sections and um and yeah hopefully we get a nice nice harvest of ginger but look here's another tomato on one of these little tiny uh what is that one gallon pot look at all the tomatoes on this thing one two three and um even on this one this one looks all raggy another one um yeah was it Five in that cluster, another bunch in this cluster, another cluster over here. Got another cluster here, got another, look at that. And that's just in like this tiny pot. And like a lot of it was just, I wanted to see what it would do in it. You know, and just, so I got more tomatoes as you're about to see. And all the sweet potatoes in the bags, I got all the trellis in them. And so as they grow, to keep them from um, rooting down into the dirt so they're taking all that energy or the photosynthesis that they're getting from the lights and they're going straight down to some tubers and there's no choke points where they're trying to put down new roots and well, it will actually intercept that energy and it will no longer be um, putting that energy into the tuber but trying to establish a new plant. Um, and one last carnage is the blueberries. These right here are a jewel. Look at that. It, it looks like they just, I'm tempted just to cut that thing way back and allow it to come back. I mean, if anyone knows, let me know in the comments, but like, it almost looks like it's got like that blight. And then here's another blueberry. I mean, now it's, well, it's now starting to get some of it, but, you know, I thought these were a lot more resilient, and these are the jewel, but, but yeah, nothing like growing in, uh, North Florida, or North Central Florida, got some terra, more cantaloupe, milkweed, but now here shortly come in the, they, they're the food source for the, was the emperor butterfly, but there's also a bug that eats them, and when they show up, they will wreak havoc on everything else around it. Hey, come on, hey, 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 come on now, let me trip on my okra, and that other cantaloupe, um, is just lacking amongst the others, but uh, been feeding everything. I mean, just I don't, you know, every year you learn something new. Every learn you learn something new, what you won't do next year. The watermelons growing up the fence. Yeah, we're just we're just having fun with it. Whatever happens, happens. So was it Roswell out there? Roswell hibiscus, really. Decided to try that tea. Get it on. Get some flowers. And the okra. So I mean, it's coming along, you know, little by little, chip shots when the games. But all in all, the carrots are really coming around. You know, they need a lot more time. We're not there yet. Right here is where they pretty much end in the beat. But 
are kind of, you know, they were looking better. And I don't know. They'll be the next casualties. The Romo tomatoes. Look at that thing. Is that not funky? But over here, got a nice little cluster. Got more clusters all in here. So, little by little. Look, these got some sort of disease or something. That ain't right, but. More Romos. I just pull that whole thing up. Maybe it's the plant. I don't know if that's the plant or. Well, I should just cut those all off, so. And on this side, these are the E tomatoes. These things are going. You got a bunch of them. All of it's looking really good. Nice and healthy. Yeah, I got like four right there in that cluster. More over here. Last year, I got no tomatoes. And I think it was just how I was fertilizing. And but look at these cherry tomatoes over here. Now these are the same cherry tomatoes as over there in that pot, but um they got one, two, three, four, five up that one. Look at this. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. One there. Another one here. Another one starting up here. Another one up there. And then below this magnificent, look at this. Then turns into a branch and then more. Absolutely kicking. And all that all that leaf lettuce, I mean, we haven't bought lettuce in weeks now and just, you know, come out here and just take a couple of these and call it a day, you know. Got a little overcrowding. Here we go, the final cherry tomato. The final cherry tomato. They are going. They are going. You know, it's nice to see that, you know? That papaya, I mean, this thing was small. Got it from um, Green Dreams, and it is it's it's going it was a little guy in the beginning now he's really kicking in um another round of buck choy okay um that started from seed that's ready to be going in the dirt catnip this everberry mulberry that came i forget where from but this thing this is ready for a big pot that fig oh, i really want to try that you figure out different ways I could either graft it or <coughs> take clippings and turn them into plants or either that or just <laughs> clip it and allow it to do its thing. The Moringa that I start from seed is starting to come around. Here right here is all green turmeric that I just wanted to start a supply of. And here's the original orange one that I got. And when I dug it up to put the other ones, um, the pot that has the other green turmeric in had the orange in it. When I dug it up, there was a few pieces that were just starting to bud. So instead of getting rid of them, I put them in these little pots. So I'm hoping that they turn around. These are just, uh, what's it called? These were suckers that were churned and I just stuck them in dirt to see what happens. And here are more Roswell that are gonna go in the front yard, and yep. I got on Amazon a four inch pot. And it had like nine nine little um, trees in it, so I separated them and I put them all in their all individual pots. And yeah, about to repot them and put them in something bigger. Yeah, just just for the fun of it. The wild orchids that I got, um, they are they are really they're all gone. Just got this in. This is a Jamaican, Jamaican cherry, and you know it's not looking all that great right now. But in 
good faith. Hopefully here in a couple days things turn around and you know, well not a couple days, it'll take weeks. Pigeon P. Let's talk Pigeon P. Only got one really going. I'm wondering if that's even what it was supposed to look like. Um, got two more trying to grow. I don't know. Um, got one of the green or two of the green and not one of the red are coming up. Got, I think this is Swiss chard that I'm going to start getting planting out there. I had a bunch of extra seeds and that was just okra and I just kind of just randomly threw them in this pot and uh, I didn't know what they were now that I'm looking at it, that's okra so um, the Cernan cherry this thing is kicking this thing is looking real healthy just doing its thing and you know it's going to continue to do it as long as I keep feeding it right and Got more rounds of lettuce ready to go that are ready to go in the dirt and do their do their thing. More lettuce and the Barbados cherries. This one, this was the one that looked the worst in the beginning, and now it's really coming around. Got new shoots. Got new shoots. This one was the more healthier one, and then it just took a turn for the worse and I thought I was gonna lose it and now look at it. it looks beautiful it looks absolutely gorgeous the dwarf banana hey, I swear to God this thing like grows like a f it's just constantly going but yeah so this is my weekly well now it's every other week but hopefully do it again next week and I'll get back on schedule Oh yeah, and two other things. One is a Taiwanese um, guava, and the other is a cocoa. I don't know what's gonna happen with these. Um, got a little bud right there. I know the cocoa is not designed for this growing zone, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try. And now I'm gonna quickly show you one last thing but it's in the kitchen.